Hello everybody, my name is Aaron. We're going to go over the issues that pop up in Game of Thrones Risk. Alright, I got my laptop here. I'm just going to read a few things, a few notes that I um, made while I was doing the rules recording of this thing. So if you want to check out the complete rules with uh, many videos and uh, the rules completely laid out for you, make sure you check out that video. It took me forever to make. Okay, so to start off, start this thing off, um, not everything fits in the freaking box, which is stupid. I mean, I should do an overhead shot, but this is how I had to lay it out. You can't put cards in here. They stick up too high, and you can't put the, the maps back in. It's retarded, so you're putting the cards where the tokens go, and then uh, it's a mess, and then the cards get everywhere. So whoever thought that out is an engineering genius. There really is not enough army pieces. If you are planning to dominate the whole map, there is not enough army pieces to go there. I don't. You don't even have enough physical pieces to fill every country, even using the three army token instead of ones. They want you to use the three army token for a place marker on your um, stats board as well. There's just not enough tokens to do what you want to do in this game. There really should have been another way to uh, manage your stats instead of using one of these. Their bottoms are really small. You bump anything, all the stats go all over the place, and then you got to recount everything. There should have been little cardboard tokens or something. It would have been so much easier. Just another thing that wasn't thought through. There's a few things on the map that kind of drive me nuts. The Western lens is the wrong color, and Crown lens is the wrong color. Because when you set it up, you have black in the yellow space and yellow in the black space. It doesn't make any sense that every other continent um, territory is color matched. Why did they flip those? Slaver's Bay on um, the Ezos map should be blue. Why isn't it blue? The one thing that I noticed about this Westeros map, the other Ezos one isn't so bad, but I could pick it up for you. Look at how much water there is. Look at all the water. Why can't we select all, make this map a bit bigger, to fill in this, look at how much free space there is up here. I mean, this, uh, you can you can manipulate the size of it, maybe offset it in the corners or something. I mean, but it's, there's so much crammed stuff in here. The map gets so loaded, it's hard to see what's going on, especially in the middle here. This is just a mess. So, uh, control A, free transform, boom. The thing gets a bit bigger, everybody's happier, but. No, they made it all in water. I don't get it. The one extremely minor point, um, these seats of power, I think that they should have been um, modeled after each group and what their uh, main castle or town, whatever you want to call it, looks like on the intro of Game of Thrones. That would have brought it just to the next level because these are all just pumped out um, just generic. Because they're all separate colors, this had to be injected separately. So why not just make a different 3D model for it, and then inject, I don't know. It's so easy, they could have just done that a little bit extra. When I got my deck, a few of my Maester cards were stuck together, a group like that, about that thick, and it kind of wrecked the tops of them a bit. So if you're really playing, like for example, that one, I don't know if you can see that, but what, if you're really playing this quite a bit, um, you can get used to where the marks are on the cards as to what card it is and cheat. I think that's more just trying to get the production costs down. However, this game was expensive. It was like 80 bucks. So, I mean, I don't know. It's a small thing. In Skirmish, when you're relying on this card to finish the game, this is the end game card. When it's in a stack of cards, it, um, yeah, it kind of gives itself away. If your stack gets messy, let me explain. You have a stack and your stack gets messy. Now everybody knows exactly when the game's gonna end and it wrecks it for everyone. Also in the rules, there's a couple places where it refers to the revealing of the card in the, in the deck and the picking up of the card from the deck as when the game should end. Um, I think they did a poor job proofing their rules. There's a few rules in the rule book and on some tokens that are wrong, which is pretty interesting. But anyways, in the rule book, it mentions once this is revealed, the game is over. And somewhere else in the rule book, it mentions once this is picked up, the game is over. 
if you wait until this is picked up, the last person gets kind of a freebie round where they just go and trash everything to get try and get as many points. So you have to go by when it's revealed. The only crappy part is um, it could be half revealed in the deck and then it wrecks it for everyone. Why couldn't this just be another normal card that's picked up? That would be even more awesome because no one knows, right? No one knows. Anyways, the fortification has conflicting rules. It's pretty interesting. On the token, it reads... Plus one to all defense dice, where in the um, rules you get eight-sided dice for defense. So that was an afterthought after these things were already printed. In the rule book, there is a missing box around, bolded box around uh, the number two on page seven. There is a character card, Ario Hote. When it is played, portion is bolded. When the rest of the cards on the same team are not. So I don't know what that's all about, but there's a few Photoshop errors in this game. And something else that's a little funny is nowhere in the rules does it say anything about how many of special tokens you can have on one um, territory. They mention, they only ever give examples involving two, but they never say you can only have two on a territory. I like seaports, I do. I think there's too many of them on this map, and I think that they are too powerful. You have to load up every single territory that you own with armies to protect your borders because there's seaports everywhere. The control of the power throws around quite a bit, which is nice. It keeps the game going. I feel as though the ports could have been pulled back just a little bit. Objective cards. I hate objective cards. Um, they look like this. I think objective cards should be face up, not face down. The rules say face down, and then everybody just kind of does their own thing. It feels like we're all just in the same room, on the same board, playing with ourselves, basically. Just alone. It's really dumb. You can't interact very well and try and stop people and build alliances and all that crap when you can't even see what's going on. I hate objective cards so much, I don't think it should win you the game. I think winning objectives should give you bump ups in the game. I know that total conquering of the map is a little too long of a game for most people, and I agree. There should be some sort of intermediary where you've killed one or two uh, teammates and then the game's over because you own over 50% of the resources or something like that. I think winning the game at 10 victory points is meh. Maybe put it down to 5 and you get a boost or something like that because you went and did a bunch of side quests. But ending the game at 10 victory points seems kind of hollow. Seems like a bit of a waste in my opinion. I'm, I'm not an objectives kind of guy. What's the point of playing? The special tokens are interesting. I think that the knight token should have a little bit of a boost because no one's going to get it. It's really dumb. Uh, just one to the highest dice roll. Why, don't, why doesn't it say one to the highest dice roll and stops one to the highest dice roll of the enemy? But if there's two knights opposing each other, that they cancel out. Yeah, there's a few character cards that are pretty embarrassing. There's some characters. And some of them will never be used. You may force an opponent to reroll any one die once for the battle. I mean, that is so weak and it costs a hundred bucks. That's so weak. I would never use that. It's such a waste. I feel like they could have gotten a bit more creative than what they have here for character cards. I do love the concept though, having like a little back door that you can just flip open some skills, but they're really weak. Some of them are really weak. You'll only use one or two characters, and then the rest are a waste. Um, I think that they should go one further to, in an attempt to create some borders here. Um, I think that a fortification should represent a fortification, and you cannot enter it or take it over unless you have a siege machine attacking that. Now you have the opportunity to create some borders here instead of ports just wrecking it all, adding eight-sided dice, and then having a physical block until you have a um, siege machine in there. I think that would bring an extra dynamic to it for sure. All you have to do is limit the number of fortifications you can use to three. Now I'm not saying the siege engine destroys the fortification, it just helps you take it. So if you take the fortification, you own it, and they just stay on the map until uh, you pay to destroy it or someone takes it back and they pay to destroy it and that's it guys that's my beefs for game of thrones uh risk it is pretty fun there's new dynamics and everything brought to risk uh, i would recommend it if you can get it at a decent price i feel close to 100 bucks is a little up there as far as it bringing game of thrones into the picture i mean 
yeah, it's there. I feel like they could have done a little bit better in areas. But overall, I'm probably going to give it a... I want to say a 7, but it's so generic. I'd give it an 8.5, closer to 9. Those few things that I mentioned here could have really just brought it that extra 0.5 because it really is a fun game. So thank you for watching. If you want to see more about this game and other games, make sure you hit up the channel, and we'll see you guys next time.